Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mixed Bag of Wrestling. Finally, finally I'm getting around to doing this video that I promised more than a couple of times in the last couple of months to do. And that's a video on Kofi Kingston. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Finally, I'm doing the Kofi Kingston video and I'm very sorry that I didn't get to it sooner. There was a lot going on in the last couple of months. And, and it almost kind of felt like, you know, I almost kind of felt like Kofi myself. And that sounds a little weird, but think of it like this. Kofi, who started out in chaotic wrestling, went to Deep South Wrestling, went to OVW, then the, the WWE's version of ECW, and went up the ranks that way. And then finally, when he's in the main event, he gets stopped, dead in his tracks. Kind of felt like that for me because I had been sort of traveling, going through a lot of problems, trying to rise out of it, and then getting stopped in my tracks. That's kind of how I've been feeling. So in a sense, I kind of understand what Kofi's going through. It sounds a little weird, but that's how it's been for me. But let's get into this this mixed bag of wrestling. Look, you can say a lot about Kofi Kingston. You can say a lot that he botches most of the time. Not all the time, but most. You could say that maybe he doesn't have the ability to go into the main event. Maybe he does. But the thing is this. Kofi is the last of the main mid-carters we have. Now, I'm sure many people are going to say, wait a minute, there are other mid-carters. True, there are. But have you seen them so prominently featured like Kofi Kingston? Kofi, as far as I'm concerned... It's the only Mick Carter that the WWE is willing to show the most. Not counting The Miz. The Miz has gone to the main event scene and then he slid back down into the Mick Card. Which is alright. For wrestlers, they must go up and down in the wheel. If you don't know what the wheel is, it's simple. For a wrestler in a promotion, to stay interesting, they have to change. Doesn't mean they have to change the character, but they have to change their position in the card. In other words, they can't stay at the top all the time because they become boring still like what we got for Randy Orton, we got for going to be mainly for Sheamus now, for John Cena obviously. They're always up here. They don't go anywhere. They'll feud with other people, with each other, but they never leave the main event. They're supposed to go down and then come back up, giving some interest to the fans. If the, in if the fans got no interest, they're not going to cheer for the guy or boo for the guy or anything. They're just going to go and watch him on TV or at the live event and go, hmm, yeah, wow. Hey, what's the next match coming up, buddy? I don't know. That's what you would say with your friend. That's it. That's what you get. If you're the type of fan that has seen the same person in the same position for so long, you get bored. You cheer for them, maybe, but... Once you see the match, you're going to see, oh, it's the same thing. So that's the reason why they say progression of the car. In other words, you go up to the top, you stay there for a while, and then you go back down, drop to the floor, and then come back up. A lot of times, that's how they used to do it years ago. They would make you come down and then bring you back up, giving you some interest, maybe a new character. Maybe you might be a heel. Maybe you may stay your face, but then you'll have... Some type of change in your character. Maybe you have a feud with someone that may bring something out in you by your mic skills. Maybe you'll come up with a new move that may interest people. Things like that. Kofi Kingston has not had that opp opportunity but once. Between 2009 and 10 when he fought with Randy Orton. Randy Orton was the only person in his way that could have got him to springboard to the top. And then we could see then if he had the ability to actually handle the main event scene. Because, look, not everyone who's pushed to go into the world title scene or the WWE title scene can actually handle it. Some people, look at Sheamus. When they sent him up around 2010 to 2011, he became world champion. He wasn't ready for it yet. No one was interested in him yet. And he just had to be dropped because there was nothing there. His reign as WWE Champion was brief and it, there was nothing there. No one was interested. There was no real build for him. So he had to drop down before he finally won it in 2012. And for a while he was doing alright until they just made him stale because they kept him here. 
and feuded with only a few people and never dropped him low enough to be interesting. Yeah, they dropped him down to the WWE from WWE Championship to World Championship, but still, once he was there, there was only a few people to feud with and then there was nothing for him to do. That's the reason why he's boring next to always winning, which is part of that problem. To be booked as a face, a lot of times they'll book you as unbeatable. 100% unbeatable. And that's what happened with Sheamus. Because he was 100% unbeatable, he kept rolling around with the same three or four guys with nothing to do. And that's where he is now. Kopi had his chance to go up in 2009 to 10 with Randy Orton. And we already know Randy was the one that stopped that push. So we really never had a chance to know if Kopi could actually handle the main title scene. Or if he was like Sheamus, he had to be slid down and then brought back up. We never got that chance with Kopi. Now look at this. These are what he's got. He has four title reigns as IC champ, two title reigns as US champ, and he's won the tag team championships three times. The world championship once with CM Punk and twice the WWE championship, which is a unified title with Evan Bourne, who screwed himself up by messing up the Wellness Program, and R-Truth, who also kind of screwed up the Wellness Program, but he managed to keep himself from getting fired. But this is what Kopi is. And right now, he's lost the title to Wade Barrett. He went up against who? The Big Show got his shit knocked out. And pretty much, where is he now? What goes on with Kopi? What should be done? This is what this video is about. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a, a couple of possible scenarios what will happen with Kobe. What should be happening with Kobe and what might happen with Kobe, what's going on right now. This is what might happen with Kobe. Kobe right now is still in mid card and what will happen eventually is this. That could happen. Eventually, he will go back after Wade again. Now, Wade is in the mid-card. I was hoping Wade would have some type of problem or feud with, oof, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. <laughs> Bring fire. Do I believe that's going to happen? No. What I do believe is that Kopi is going to be bothering Wade Barrett. That's what I believe. I thought maybe he may go after Antonio, but it's possible that Antonio is going to be messing with The Miz. After what happened on Monday with... What happened with The Miz, Ric Flair, and Antonio Rosado, there is a good chance that we're going to have a Miz and Antonio feud, which would be great for The Miz. It's not the point that he gets an undercard title when he deserves to be in the main event scene. Like I said, you have to have characters who have to go down and then come back up. Let Miz have a mid-card feud with the undercard champion. Let him win the title. Let him continue having the feud with that man or someone else, drop it, and then move on to the next title, which could be the IC Championship again. Or he can forget about that and go back into the world, go to the world, or get the WWE Championship. He's never had the world title, so actually, this might be a good thing for him. If he wins the US Championship, if they have this feud, which I believe they will, he could go from the US title to the world title because he never held it and it would actually make some sense because I don't believe Al Alberto Del Rio is going to keep that title forever he won't if he is going to stay in the main event scene he may actually turn heel again so that would be great for the Miz now for Kopi this is where I believe they're going to put him this is what I believe the WWE is going to do Kopi is going to bother with Wade Barrett again because they don't really have anybody for Wade to face no one. So Kopi's going to come back, cause some flack for Wade saying he wants his title back, and then they'll have this feud again. There's a good chance for that because there's really nothing for Kopi to do unless he's going to be jobbing to other people. He may job to a, you never know, to the Shield. He may job to Big Show again. He could job to Antonio. And that would be all they'll do with him if they don't let him face Wade. That's what I believe might happen. Do I believe he'll get the IC Championship again? Not now. Maybe somewhere halfway through the year he may regain it again. Be five-time champion. 
Five time, five time, five time, five time, five time champion like Booker T. But Booker T had the world championship. He was a main event in WCW. And Kofi isn't. And Kofi will just be stuck turning his wheels like this. Do I believe the WWE may release Kofi? No. I believe Kofi is so much over with the crowd that they just can't get rid of him even if they don't believe he's worth keeping. Because he's one of the few black people they got that they're willing to show. It's not nice to say, but it is true. They got our truth, but they don't bring them out much. The primetime players, don't bring them out a lot. Maybe they're doing an NXT, but they don't show them on the main event scene constantly. Kofi, they do. So Kofi, like I said, in the beginning of this video, is the only mid-carder they have that they probably feature the most. Mainly, one, because they don't have anybody that has the skill. Two, he's black, unfortunately. I don't think the WWE is totally racist, but they are trying to keep the black fans interested because Kobe has that attitude. That's what we got. Now, what do I believe should be done with Kobe? There's a couple of things that can be done with Kobe. The one is what I've said before. Turn Kobe heel. See how he can handle it. If it doesn't work, you can always turn him back face. He's never been pushed as a heel. And I was hoping after losing to Wade and then losing to Big Show that they're going to do this. Now, how do I believe they'll do it? If they were going to do it, this is what I believe. Say Kopi has already been knocked out by Big Show again. Let's say by the SmackDown, they let him face him again and he gets knocked out. But instead of him, well, not knocked out, but maybe choke slam, but so he won't be completely unconscious. Then our truth comes to the ring. Tries to help his friend. Because the Big Show was ready to trash him really bad. So when it comes down to it, when our truth is trying to help him up, Kobe shoves him away. Shoves him and say, get the hell off me. Or he tries to hit our truth And then they start having their arguments for the next couple of weeks. Kobe says, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. But then when they start teaming them again, the WWE, if they team them again, will be the perfect catalyst for our truth to stay face, but Kofi to turn heel because as they continue to lose, and they'll lose. That's what I'm hoping for. Kofi will get angry, blame our truth. Our truth is not going to take it. And then Kofi, one day, which will be in a match, either walk away, or if they lose, our truth will get laid out by Kofi. Kobe will get his lay his ass out. And that is how Kobe turns from face to heel. Because look what happened with R Truth and John Morrison. R Truth supposedly got tricked by John Morrison to give up his his match, his number one contender's match. And I believe that was with the Miz. He had his chance to go up against the Miz. No, was it the Miz or was it John Cena. I can't remember back that far because they kept switching the title so much I can't remember. So leave a comment below. Tell me during the time when R-Truth had just turned heel on John Morrison, was it The Miz who had the title or was it John Cena who had the title? I can't remember. But anyway, simply put, having R-Truth turn heel using John Morrison as a catalyst and seeing John Morrison get his, lay, get his ass laid out and R-Truth smoking his ass off in the British arena, in the arena in England, was perfect. People loved it. They loved seeing R-Truth turn from face to heel because he had been a, he a face for so long. Kobe is the same thing right now. He has been face for a long time. Since around 2007, he has been a face. That's a long time to be a face. And no progression of your character. No progression of the card to become champion. You had the US title. You had the IC title. You had the world and WWE tag titles. But you never had the chance to grab the brass ring of the world championship and WWE championship. This is a perfect time for him to turn heel. Do I believe he can do a good heel? I don't know. This is where the question is for Kofi. If Kofi turns heel using our truth as a catalyst as our truth used John Morrison as a catalyst it would be depending on how much our our truth is going to work with Kopi at first our truth must job properly to him 
and must have arguments with him and eventually have a fight where our truth loses totally clean. Our truth must not win to Kopi because then he's not going to get over. Unless he's going to do a crazy bit like our truth, which won't work. Our truth has his right stick when it was little Jimmy. Kopi is not going to lose his mind. You must have Kopi win over our truth clean. And then go from there to do something wild. He has to start going after more prominent faces. Or maybe a couple of heels that screwed him over. Like Wade Barrett screwed him over. Seriously. Mess his ass up. Go after the big show. But not like fight him. Normal way. Grab a chair and beat the shit out of the big show. Grab a chair and beat the shit out of Wade Barrett. He has to be a vicious heel. It's the only way I believe he's going to get over as a heel. He has to be very vicious. Now, why would I say vicious? Simple. Kobe Kingston has never been known to be vicious. He came close a couple of times when he was angry at, who was it? The Miz. But never really took that next step. Maybe with Alberto Dorio, he acted angry and was beyond recognition then. Or with, um, who else? Dolph Ziggler. But yeah, with Dolph, he had the most near viciousness, but never went the next step. They never turned him heel. They teased it, but never went with it. This time, he has to be full heel. He then got to go full bore and attack people with chairs. Throw them down steps. Do whatever is necessary to get him over, and he will finally start getting some leeway. And then the promo segments must be really on point. He can't be kind and gentle in his promo segments. He's going to have to be fucking vicious. Say, I'm going to destroy everybody. I don't care. Let his hair go out and just act wild and uncontrollable like he's lost his mind. Change the wildcat to the double dog. <laughs> Change the moniker they had him as a wildcat to the devil dog. The devil. Anything. Let his hair go out. Let him just look totally mad and vicious. That is the best option he has. Because if he doesn't act that vicious, if he doesn't act that heelish, there is no way he's going to get over because no one's going to believe it. They'll believe he's just going to switch back to a face later. Now, if they do this, he could easily go into the main title scene. He can easily go up against a Sheamus, a Cena, re ignite the rivalry between him and Randy Orton and, and eventually I believe Randy is going to turn heel. I believe that. But in this case having Kobe as a heel going up against Randy, this might actually be a good thing for him. It would. Because since Randy was the one that caused him the most flack in so many years ago they could actually include this in the actual feud. Saying you know you f me. You messed me up. You fucked me. Back in 2009 and 10, when I had a chance to be pushed, you're the one that caused this. I'm coming after you, Randy Orton, with his hair all wild and out. Kind of like this. Me with all my crazy hair, ladies and gentlemen. I'm an old man with long hair going, Ugh. I'm going to get you, Randy Orton. I'm going to fuck you up. You're the one I'm going to get. Having that kind of look, having that type of anger and hatred and say, you're the one who messed me up in 2009 to 10 and actually show footage of it would actually make it really an interesting possibility. We could actually have a Kofi Kingston push as a, as a heel that actually could get over. And then eventually, since he'll be in the main event scene and get the world title first, let him get the world title, not the WWE. Let him get the world title. Let him be on SmackDown him to see if he can actually handle the world title with the new character with the promo segments in the ring with the backstages and the backstabbing in the back and everything that makes a feud and makes a really good heel character let him test himself out on Smackdown and if he does great switch him to Raw hell let him go after Cena let him go after Cena. Cena is still the face of the company. And they're not going to turn him heel for quite a long time yet. They're not. So let Cena and the evil Kofi Kingston go up against one another. 
Have you ever heard of Kofi and Cena going up against each other? As far as I know, those two have never faced each other in a match. Ever. As far as I know. I could be wrong. If anyone knows of those two ever faced, tell me below. But you know what? In the end, Kofi that goes into the main event scene as a heel will get over enough that when they turn him back to a face, he can stay there for a while. Because people will forget how he used to be as a as a, as a face because they'll be so used to him as a heel and if he does it well enough when he turns back to face he'll get over as a face this is what I hope for Kopi now the other one is not going to happen but this would be the best option Kopi still is a face basically being pushed up the card and having a feud with someone in the shield let Kofi get laid out by the shield and let him start having a feud with the shield along with Ryback. Let him and Ryback work together. At least then Ryback is going to have someone who's a seasoned veteran that is already in, already known. And as they both go, grow and work up, eventually split them off. Ryback is going to go after the world uh, WWE title. Then let Kofi go after the world title. At that time, who knows who's going to be champion at the time. Maybe Alberto Del Rio by then will turn back to a heel. Or we'll have someone else as a heel. Maybe he might be one of the members of the Shield that becomes champion. It could be Roland Reigns. It could be. He's big enough and strong enough to actually do it. You never know. You never know what's going to happen in the future. I would still say that the head of the Shield should take it. But you know what? If you want someone who's strong, that would be good because particularly Kobe can go after a big guy that it'll make it look like an underguard, underdog guy. So this is what I believe should happen to Kobe Kingston. Well, I hope you like this mixed bag of wrestling. Subscribe and comment to Zane's view. The great Zane loves you and thanks you for looking. <laughs> Just something I thought about, sorry. But um, look, if you like this, just leave me a comment, leave me a subscribe, and I'll see you soon.